Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, my name is Brian Jenks. Today we are talking about probably one of my latest, just absolutely favorite applications. I've been talking about it and using it for a mm, good while now, but I've been hesitant to do this review because I really wanted to put it to its test and see what I think about it while actually using it in real life for real purposes. And I gotta say, Ginkgo app is amazing and I'm gonna be gushing about it today. So I've been using Ginkgo app for probably the last couple months and I've been using it to write my newsletters and I'm actually trying to start drafting a couple more Medium articles, which I am really horrible about writing compared to video making. So it's actually been really helpful, extremely helpful with the writing process. I'm going to get into more of the details about why, but the card-based workflow, keyboard-centric design, and just the fact that the cards, being able to focus on them, the way it's structured, it just jives really well with my ADHD brain. Because having to focus on a long, like, uh, what is it, continuous scroll of just blocks of text in the writing process is just, it doesn't work well with me. But when I can see horizontal tree hierarchies, nested cards, and I'm just working horizontally with cards, for some reason it just works a lot better. I'm going to go over a lot of what this app can do and why you might like it. If that sounds interesting, stay tuned. The best ways to support the channel are, if you're going to do it on an ongoing basis, GitHub sponsors because they take no fees, followed by Patreon. If you're going to do like a one-time thing, buy me a coffee, PayPal, or just fine. And if you just want to support me without any money involved, the best thing you can do is like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and that's it. So diving right in, Ginkgo app. What does it look like? Why do I like it? What do I like about it? So Ginkgo app is a web app. Yep, I'm actually using a web app, I know, shocking. So this is actually a very bare bones uh, script I am beginning to flesh out for a really comprehensive Medium article on my Zotero workflow videos and elaborating on those points through text. So getting that out of the way, this is Ginkgo app. This is it. This is really, really simple. And it may look a little complex at first glance, but honestly, you can ignore a lot of these buttons. I primarily use the keyboard. It's keyboard centric, it uses Vim keys. It's just the best thing since sliced bread. So maneuvering around in here is really easy. I can do HJKL to move around to the different cards. This is all done with the keyboard. I'm not using my mouse at all. Already, you, the fact that you use support Vim keys already has my interest. So that alone was like, hmm, what's going on with this application? But then, being actually able to use, manipulate, and move these cards completely with the keyboard and seeing a horizontal structure. So this is the parent, these are the children, this is the parent of this child, and this is the parent of this child, and being able to move horizontally down hierarchies of cards made it really easy to focus on blocks of content instead of the overarching whole of the content. So in this case, I'm able to, able to laser focus, pinpoint, and not get lost in the sea of words and focus on little bite-sized pieces of content that actually make it easier for me to have content flow from me. And it just is just a nicer experience for my ADHD brain. So these are the types of tools that I try to collect and highlight a lot of because I find that these are incredibly helpful for the way that my brain works. So how do we use this? So first things first, how do we move? You can use the mouse. I prefer to never use the mouse whenever possible and to have a completely keyboard centric workflow. That is my preference. Barely anything supports that, but you know what? Strive. So we can actually man maneuver completely with the keyboard. So I'm gonna have my fingers on H, J, K, and L, and I'm actually going to move around the cards, just like this, left and right with H and L, and then up and down with J and K. And that's it, this is how we move around. Okay, this to Vim users is gonna seem very, very familiar because now we're in like a normal mode. So we're not editing anything, we're not doing anything, we're just moving around. So if I wanna go and enter enter insert mode and begin to type, I can press enter. 
I am now in this card and I can type hello world. Okay, but now we want to exit back to normal mode. I can, oh, nope, can't hit escape. So that's different. But if I do command, or in this case, control for Windows, when I say command, it's probably control for Windows, but on Mac, command, enter, lets you go back to normal mode. Now I can go back to traversing. Great. So now I added content. Let's say I don't like this card. I just want to, I just want to delete it. I don't want it around. I want to kill it. If I do command backspace, bye bye, it is now moved to the trash. I could undo this. I could go fetch it from the trash, show trash, and restore these things. But no, I don't want it. I want to delete it. Get rid of it. So let's just say, all right, I'm done with that. And now I'm actually going to be, I want to make a new card. I want to put it back. I don't want to bring it in the trash. I want to make a new card. Well, if I hold command and then J or K, depending on what card I'm on, it will actually let me insert a new card above or below. So J goes down, K goes up. All right, command J. And now you have a new card. It already sends you to edit mode. You can type content. Okay, we're done. Command enter. Great. I want to go here. I want to put something above now. Command K. All right, more content. There we go. Now we have some more. And all that is just done with command and J and K. Add a new card above or below. So we can maneuver and then easily just insert another one. Type some content and submit it. And that's it. Wow. Okay, but here's some really cool stuff that we can do is that we can split, merge, and move cards. Okay, first things first. How do we move cards? Well, I'm going to go up to this one that says more content and I want to move it down. Holding Alt or Option and using the arrow keys. Now you can use uh, H, J, and K, and L to move the card, but because I have some uh, window management software, the H, J, K, L with, with Option doesn't really work too well, sadly, and I don't want to remap it. So I'm just going to use the arrow keys. But if I did Option down arrow, it will move this card down. Okay, so now how do we actually combine cards? So to merge cards, you're actually going to do Command Shift J or K or up or down arrow. So I wanna merge these two into this one. I wanna make one massive card out of all three of these. So if I go from the bottom one and I merge upwards, command shift up arrow, it's going to go merge, merge. And now we have one solid card. But if you want to undo that and you want to split a card, you can enter it into edit or insert mode. And now wherever your cursor is, think of that being the line break. The line break meaning, you know, break the line, but then everything below that becomes a new card. So now if I go to the end of this line and I do command J to go down. So can't remember how we inserted a card below another one. This will do it, but in edit mode, it'll say, hey, everything below the cursor, take that and put that into the new note. So if I do command J, there you go. There's a new note and we're still in edit mode. So I could just go here, split it again, enter, and there's all of our content back again just like that. Move, merge, and split. Just a brief interruption before we continue with the content. If you were interested, I do have a monthly now newsletter where I talk about cool articles I've found, new concepts I've discovered, really great tools that I have added to my workflow. And it's kind of like the go-to place for all of the recent and up-to-date happenings of all the things that I'm doing. And also in this article, I talk about various other things like mental health or the videos that I'm releasing. And it's also just a good direct line of communication to have a conversation with me. I also will be talking about updates and releases for my upcoming product, Obsidian for Business, where I have uh, several different tools and scripts and programs set up to facilitate the plain text life, but in a firewalled, protected Microsoft Office 365 environment. I use this in the government public sector workforce, so this could probably work for you. And if you were interested in that, my newsletter is the best place to get ahead of any of those news about it. And anybody who is a Patreon GitHub supporter, you will be the first to be able to beta test it as well as you will get to use it and have it for free. So if any of that sounds interesting, sign up to my newsletter. The link to that is in the description and the pinned comment below. And let's get back to the content. Now there's some other options for focused editing that I think are really cool. I'm not too familiar with the hotkeys because I haven't been spending way too much time in Ginkgo app, but I really hope to solidify these in memory because these are incredibly useful. And this is just 
the bare bones functionality of this application. So let's say we have a whole tree here. Now this parent right here has all of these children, even if it's down to their grandchildren. So these other ones up here do not have any children. So I don't want to focus on them. I want to focus on this branch. Well, if I press the equal sign, it will highlight that tree and all of its branches only. If I'm done with that view and I want to see everything again, right next to the equal sign, the minus, and press that and everything is shown again, just like that. But now we also have some options, not just to highlight, you know, a particular branch of a tree, is that we can actually focus and full screen some of these cards. So in full screen, if we're in edit mode, so if I'm actually editing this, if I'm already in edit mode, I can blow it up and do shift F11. And now I can edit this in full screen mode. Really cool. I can hit escape and it'll take me back to preview mode. I'm not too big of a fan of that one, but you know, something that might be a little bit easier is that if you are in edit mode again, and you do shift enter, or not shift enter, um, if you are on a card and you do shift enter, it'll actually open that card into edit mode full screen. Okay, so you had to be in preview or normal mode like this. And then if you do shift enter in this mode, it will open it in edit full screen. Really cool. One thing you can also do is you can actually toggle full screen, just showing the preview. For instance, if it's a video, an iframe, an embedded something or other that you it's more graphical than text, you can just show yourself the preview by pressing F for full screen. F, and here's the preview, not edit, preview. Now, if I hit enter, I'm in edit mode. Command enter, I'm back in preview mode. You know, hit escape, uh-uh, nope, we did F. So we need to do F again to toggle it off really useful ways of laser focusing onto pieces of content in this already great card based workflow. I'm already like over the moon excited with how great this has been for my writing. Okay, continuing on, what can we actually put into these cards? Now, Ginkgo app is a web app, which means there's a lot of support for some, you know, maybe unexpected things that aren't just straight up apparent in the documentation, which I honestly I haven't seen some of the documentation be readily apparent. So there are some functionalities where we can actually use, yes, Markdown, but also LaTeX and HTML. Let's take a look at that. So first things first, as with anything, the best help you can get, press the question mark, shift question mark, and it will give you a list of all of these commands. You know, you don't need too many of these to really start being successful. It's honestly just great. You can count some of this stuff, honestly, it's kind of fun. So if I actually inserted a card here and I did command and then opening square bracket, or it looks like this to you, opening square bracket, it'll actually insert a task, task, render that, and it'll actually give you a little checkable task icon. That's really neat. Okay. Now you can just use regular markdown. So, you know, here's a heading, here's another level two, and then three, uh, well, three, and so on. And so we render, you can actually see different headings, then you can have uh, bold, you can have italic, you can have code, and you know, we've got different types of markdown formatting. Really useful, really cool. We also have, and you have to turn it on, I believe, uh, let's see, disable LaTeX. So you have to enable LaTeX. What you can do is I can have a formula here. So I can just do, you know, pi, insert that, Cool, and it put, inserts the pi symbol, but we also can have equations in LaTeX, and now it's a centered equation for whatever you might wanna put in there. And I made a whole other video on just LaTeX MathJax equations, which it looks like it's using since it's using the dollar sign syntax. So you wanna learn more about LaTeX math and MathJax, check out the card above. So that is LaTeX Markdown. There's some really cool stuff we can do. Now, I'm not sure if it's, LaTeX in general, like overall, you know, in begin document, end document LaTeX, you can do some weird stuff like do math jacks, but then do, you know, text BF for bold font and do uh, hello and render that and it will be bold. But I'm not sure that's actually supposed to be what you're doing, but you know, you can get away with that. So let's actually merge these up here. Um, burp, burp, merge those. There we go. And now it's just acting funny. So there we go. Now, if we actually inserted some HTML, yeah, that works too. <laughs> so if you actually insert bold and say, this is bold, close it off and then render it. 
you can actually make HTML work in here, which means, oh, if you can put arbitrary HTML in this, you can start doing some fun stuff. So let's insert an iframe. Yep, iframes work. So you could actually insert YouTube videos, articles, basically any freaking web page that can be supported through an iframe. And now here's a Pomodoro timer if you so chose to have one. And yeah, sky's the limit. So you can put all kinds of content into these cards. It's really cool. Okay, but how about images? How do images work? So if I inserted a new card, I'm gonna put it down here. I wanna insert an image. Well, you can do Command Shift I to insert. And now it will actually bring up this modal and it will say, hey, give me a file, Dropbox, Evernote, web images, basically insert a image. And yeah, you can do that. And that's it. So you can easily insert an image into this and have it rendered uh, on, the, on the back end. Now, one thing cool about Ginkgo Web is they also give you some templates. Now, when you first sign up, you actually can access these, you know, these templates. And I'm not sure how to get to them uh, from this side of... Uh, Oh, new, there we go. Um, and so you can actually in, insert uh, some other things. You can export JSON, so you can actually send your own templates to other people, but timelines, academic papers, screenplays, these are like some examples of some templates they give you, but you can make this as crazy as you want. So like I've been doing my newsletters in this and I like have a standard template with my little, little header images and some work in here. And this is just, you know, my upcoming newsletter and that's, basically how I do it. That's how I've been writing those newsletters that if you're on my newsletter, you're getting it every month. That's how I make them. One really great thing about this application that also helps make it really great for academic usage is that you can do collaborative editing. I can easily just share this, you know, a link to a collaborator, and we can actually have multiple people editing a document at the same time using this tool and workflow. And that's already really cool. But even without collaborative editing, this is just a great facilitator for writing, for me anyways. Uh, and then, and then, all this content you have in here, you have a myriad of export formats. You can send it to JSON, Word, LaTeX, plain text, presentation, you name it, whole card, or the whole tree, current card and sub cards, so basically a single branch, or only the visible cards with uh, tag filtering or a specific column all kinds of ways to slice and dice and pick what export format you want for your document. And honestly, this is really, really cool. You can easily export your writing to LaTeX for an actual academic journal if you needed to, you know, basically you probably do need to write it in LaTeX. And so you could easily just write Markdown simple and then export it to LaTeX and then deal with all of that later on, on that end. But one thing I really like about this is that I can export my newsletters to Markdown, copy that and just paste it into my uh, newsletter service, ConvertKit, and it retains almost all the formatting. So I can write here, copy paste over there, and everything is perfect. And that is just amazing to me. So that way I can easily write, get the content out, mail it, and I'm done. Now, I'm not sponsored. This isn't sponsored. This is just me raving about an application I absolutely love. So when you first sign up for Ginkgo, it is not free but there's some really cool stuff about it. When you first sign into it, you don't have to pay. You can just come in and you get greeted by this tutorial course, very basic tutorials on how to use it. It drops you into this, you know, this tree, card tree over here and tells you and gives you some examples of how to use the application. You can see here, you know, I got some uh, collaborative editing. It's me and myself and I, and yeah, you get an example tree and you get a hundred cards. Now, one way that you can use this application is if you spread the word and people sign up with your link, you can get an extra 100 cards. So you don't have to pay, but you know, that's one way you could pay the developers through exposure, share the link and get your own you know, upgraded cards. Now, one thing I really like about this application is that the, the developer's model and pricing strategy is really cool. So when you actually go to upgrade and you know, buy the subscription to the application, you can pick how much you want to you know, contribute. So there's a whole bunch of uh, explanation here about what and where the money goes to, basically the fixed costs of the applications, taxes, reinvesting into the application. The actual developer capped his income from this, you know, this application at 35, 35K. So this is the most that he is accepting from making with this application. Everything else goes to charity. That's really, 
really cool. And it easily gives you a breakdown of where the money goes to. And when you change this slider for what you want to contribute to pay monthly for this application, it'll say, hey, if here's the breakdown per year if other customers were giving the exact same amount as you. And with this way, you can also see that, yeah, you're supporting the developer's efforts and the application itself, but also you're also giving back to charity. So I think that's a really great pricing model because you can pay what you want and this, this helps academics and students. And if you're really interested in supporting this cause and this developer, you can also give more. And I think that's just a really great model. Personally, I'm really hoping somebody in the Obsidian community or involved will make a Ginkgo app plugin for Obsidian so I can actually edit Obsidian markdown files with a Ginkgo app interface like this. Because I know you can do this because it's a web app, you can put it into an iframe inside of Obsidian. The only difference is you can't use anything inside of Obsidian with the editor in here. It's basically just a window to the website. So if somebody, pretty please, could make a plugin for Obsidian that gives you a Ginkgo app type of editing interface for the markdown files, I would be very grateful. Plenty of shout outs on this channel and I'd likely give you a bounty. <laughs> so hopefully you find this interesting. I really adore this application. I think it's really great, and maybe you guys might like it as well. I know that it really, really helps me with writing, and there's not very many applications that just easily stand out to me as beneficial for the way that my brain works. So let me know if you try this. How do you like it? Have you used this? What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And a quick note before we go, a big shout out to the patrons who support this channel. Thank you to everybody on GitHub sponsors and Patreon patrons who enjoy this content enough to support this channel. And this is never required, never expected or mandatory. And the fact that you enjoy the content enough to support it and me, it, it just means a lot. And it really makes it more motivating to continue to put out more content like this. So thank you very much for your support. And with that said, I will catch you all in the next one.